Now let's learn about my favorite feature from Async called Async Auto. Async Auto helps you manage uh, the control flow of your application. So if you have many functions that are going to be run in certain order and with some function depend on the result of previous functions, Async Auto will be a great solution to help you accomplish this. To demonstrate Async Auto, Let's look at an example of a sign-off sign -off flow. So on a typical sign-off flow, we, we want to typically get username and then connect to the DB and then check if the username exists. And then if it doesn't, we sign the user up. So async auto expects a list of parameters of functions. So here in the beginning, we have a function called get username. What this does is it takes a callback and then you can pass two parameters to it. First parameter is the error message. Here I'm passing null to make it successful. And then here I pass the result of this function to the next function on the line. So the next function down the line is called connect to DB. Here we typically do database connection code. So for this example, I'm just setting uh, this variable here connected to true. So if we're connected to the database, then actually don't need this function. If we're connected to the database, we just call a callback with no in the error because we don't have any error. We are connected to the database and then pass the flag of the connected to the next function. And if we do have an error, you can pass a error message to the first parameter of callback and then pass no as the value returned. Now this function here, check if user exists, it's interesting because it takes, it's an actually, it's an array, right? Where you pass the first two parameter of the array, first two elements of the array is the function that you need to be executed, needs to be finished before you can call this function. So check if user exists has a dependency on the result of connect to DB and then get username. So it will only call this when these two are finished executing. So now we're inside of check user is this, we'll just basically see, so for now I'm setting it to false. Um, so the user is this, then we need to call an error callback. We have to say the user already exists in the database with the null as the value. However, if the user doesn't exist, then we'll just do a callback and then say the user doesn't exist, which is a flag for false. So here I'm doing a set timeout to simulate um, processing. And now same thing with sign up. It basically depends on check if user exists. Now check if user exists depends on get username and connect to DB. So sign up actually depends on all three of these. So once these things are calculated, they will be available in this results variable. So results dot whatever the function name is, so here get username, will be set to this value here. So same thing for all the other two. Now here we'll just check if the username is provided by the user and we're connected to the database and the user doesn't exist, then we'd return a object called status 200 and then successfully sign up the user. Otherwise, we'll just do a callback of error sign up to the user. And then after all of this has been done, async auto takes a final parameter called it's a function with error as a first parameter and results as the second parameter. So error here will be set to something if any of these functions pass error as a first parameter in the callback. When this happens, this whole list of functions will stop executing immediately and then cause the callback here. Otherwise, it will return the results. So let's look at again the execution of this program. So if I run this program, so as you can see, it calls get username, and then it calls connect to DB, and then it goes in to check if user exists. So here you see check if user exists depends on the result from the previous two functions. And you actually, if I log the result in there, you will get these things. 
and then sign off depends on the previous three functions and that's why you have these things here and this part is from the final callback is that we don't have any errors and then this is the result we get so in a nice simple way you now have an object contains everything you need to do your application so let's do an example let's say I failed to connect to the database on the connect to DB function let's see what happens as you can see get username is executed correctly and then when you get to connect to DB it immediately fails and then goes to the error callback with the actual error message from connect to DB so this is extremely useful if you ever write anything um, in a really complex flow so async auto will help you organize your code and make sure it follows certain order and function execution dependencies.